honey in the rock. Sweet honey in the rock. Well, it tastes like honey in the rock. Oh, it tastes so sweet. That the Lord is good.
to see some people in here tonight really grab a hold to a miracle. Really grab a hold to the to a miracle they need. You need in your life. Hallelujah. I want to. I want you to believe and reach for a miracle. Believe God for something. Anybody in here need God to do something? Hallelujah. I mean, I mean, everybody need Him to do something. I mean, everybody here and here go up because we all need Him to do something. But I'm, I'm really looking for those people that really need God to do something. People that say, if God don't do it, I don't know how to get done. If God don't do this, I just don't know how it's going to get done. I need a miracle. I need to believe God for a miracle. I've tried to do everything and I've thought I had it all figured out. And every time I feel like I get close, just don't seem to be close enough. I need God to perform a miracle in my life. Hallelujah. Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody's there saying, I, I need God to do this. This is something that I cannot do. I need God to do it. In the book of Luke, the 18th chapter, amen, Genesis, the 27th verse. That's the only verse. I don't know, I got a couple more, but I definitely want to talk from from this verse on tonight. I am convinced abound in grace that it is not another word that we need in this church. It's not another scripture, it's not another verse, not another sermon, or another teaching that is needed in this house for this body of believers who my eyes are upon. But it is the faith that we must have in God. The faith that we must have in the word that we've already heard. Believe in what we've already heard, what we already know. It's crossing that, that line. It's, 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 it's crossing into that place stepping off of that cliff of believing God and not doubting. Sometimes I'm, I'm expecting God to do something and, and I settle for just something. And I know it's not God's best and I know it's not what God has done and I just be so happy that I'm just through it or over it. Or this, and I know that, you know, it's, 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 it's like when we were praying for this, uh, for Brian in, in, in New Mexico, that we were praying, he's diseased, and we're praying and asking God to heal him initially of his infection. Like the, like the disease is too big for God. Like, like God, we're just gonna ask you to do this little something. Cause we 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 don't have enough faith to believe you to for the disease. We don't have enough faith to believe you for that that, that thing that has attacked him for 29 years of his life. But this that just come up on him, we we got enough faith to believe you for that. And I think when we come to God and and we're asking God to do something when we bring God something that is that is so small that God looks at us as people of little faith or no faith 
Because to have faith in God is to believe him for the mountain. Not the hill. Not the little mound. But the mountain. God wants you to have mountain faith when it comes to him. He wants you to have mountain expectation when it comes to him. Any old body can believe for a mound. Anybody can believe for a little hill. But it takes some folks who are grounded and rooted and believe God to believe God for the mountain. Because the mountain is sometimes so great that the valley is the only place you're standing in. You're standing in the valley. And some of us tonight are standing in the valley of a situation, the valley of a storm, the valley of, uh, the, the, the valley sometimes offers no hope, no way out, no, no light. Because the mountain is so grand, so tall. You can't tell if it's daylight, if it's evening, or if it's night because the mountain is so tall, so tall that the valley is, is so well shaded that you feel like you're in darkness. Well, that's the kind of faith, this is the kind of faith you're going to need to bring you out. What's gonna, what is it going to take to, to, to bring you out of that valley? There was a song back in the day that people were saying, when I grew up as a little boy, uh, Lord, don't move the mountain, but give me the strength to climb. And, and they didn't really know what they were saying. Because we want God to move the mountain. Amen. I don't want strength to climb it. God, I want you to do what you said you would do. If I would say to this mountain, be thou removed, I want you to move that song sounded good. The words sounded good to it. Amen. Had a little beat to it. Amen. But we want God to move the mountain. Amen. Amen. God, move this mountain. Move this mountain. Don't, don't tell God not to move. Say, Lord, move it. Come on, say it. Say, Lord, move it. Amen. You got, you got a mountain? Say, Lord, move this mountain. And expect him to do it. Hallelujah. Here it is again. I needed to believe God for something big. I needed to believe God for something grand. And God is faithful. He's faithful. I'm telling you, he's a faithful God. If you believe and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Amen. Here in, in the book of Luke, Jesus says, but he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. The things which are impossible, it's not only talking about, it's talking about uh, people that you count on or you're dependent on. It's talking about you. The things that's impossible for me are possible with God. The things that are impossible for you are possible with God. Amen. But it's not going to take, it's going to take some faith. It's going to take believing God to move, the, to move the mountain that you want God to move. To do the miracle that you want God to perform. It's going to take some faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to take some faith. It's going to take some faith. Amen. Some faith in God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. It takes faith when you feel like God has left you. It takes faith when you feel like God has forsaken you. And you say, well, maybe this is not for me. 
to explain to know that that's not the voice of the Lord, but it's the voice of the adversary. It takes knowing the Lord and knowing that he is a faithful God. And he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. What does he mean by that? He means he'll never leave you nor will he forsake you. What does he mean that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? It means he changes not whatever he did yesterday, whatever he did for somebody else. He will do it today for you. And he will do it tomorrow for your children and for your loved ones. And he'll do it tomorrow for you if it needs, if it's you that's standing in the need, he'll do it for you tomorrow. But church, I'm telling you, it's going to take more than amens. It's going to take some faith. It's going to take more than agreeing. It's going to take some faith when the wind is blowing in your face. When the storms of life are blowing in your direction and you are doing all you can do to stand. And nobody understands what you're going through and nobody uh, 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 has time for you. It's going to take faith to stand. That's the miracle. That's, that's believing God. That's, that's believing God. Lord, I just want to, it's not always comfortable standing. It's not always pleasant standing. It's, you don't see things quickly sometimes. Things don't move as fast as you want them to move. They don't turn around as fast as you want them to turn around. You don't get the answer as quick as you want the answer. But stand still. Stand and let the Lord fight your battles. Stand and let the Lord bring you out. Stand knowing that the armor of the Lord is upon you. And that the Lord will not allow a weapon that is formed against you to prosper against you. Sickness will not prosper against you. Disease will not prosper against you. Some of us in here are crazy enough to believe that we'll never be sick, we'll never be diseased, that cancer can't touch our bodies, amen, that sickness and disease can't touch us. Some of us are crazy enough to believe that we'll live until Jesus comes back, amen. Amen. And it ain't because it ain't because you want to live. You you know people die. You know that things can happen. But you believe you are so anointed and you got Jesus so in on the inside of you that death and sickness cannot come nigh your dwelling. It's just how you believe. And let me tell you something. That's the way God wants you to believe. Hallelujah. God wants you to believe that way. He wants you to believe the way that if people come against you, shame on you because God don't deal with you coming against me. I believe him. I believe him. Say I believe him. Come on, say it. I believe him. I believe that he's going to protect me. Say that. I believe he's going to protect me. Come on, say I believe he's going to protect me all the days of my life. I believe he's going to make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. I believe he hears me. I believe he hears me when I pray. Hallelujah. Say, I believe. Say, I believe he's standing right here. Right here next to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The devil better be careful messing with you. He better be careful messing with you. He better be careful coming up against you. Amen. He better be careful lying to you. Amen. Amen. You are a child of God. You are a child of the King. Amen. You are the redeemed of the Lord. Amen. You've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You, are, you, are, you belong to God. Amen. You are God's very own. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ himself is upon you. Hallelujah. And you got to begin to see that. You got to begin to see that you ain't just old raggedy rag you used to be. Amen. 
you are clothed with Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That ought to do something to you on the inside. Amen. It ought to do something to your spirit. Amen. It ought to make you feel something on the inside. Amen. You are valued simply because of Jesus. Hallelujah. You have a cross in this life that you, you are bearing. You're carrying your own cross. Some are carrying sickness. Some are carrying disease. Some are carrying brokenness, broken hearts, broken relationships. Some are carrying discouragement and despair. And this, those are not the things that God wants you to carry. But you carry them. You carry fear. It's not what God wants you to carry. But some of you have allowed those things to attach themselves to your cross. And it's making your cross harder to bear. Making a situation that you're going through harder to, harder to go through. And you begin to look at that situation and you begin to say, this is impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible for me. It's impossible to come out of this situation. It's impossible to turn things around. It's, it's, it's been going on too long. I don't see any daylight. I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel because I just can't see how God can turn this around. I just can't see it. Well, it will not turn around until you see it. It will not turn around until you see it. Until you say, not my will, but your will, Lord. But until you say, I can't do it, but God, you can. God, not only can you do it, but you want to do it. Hallelujah. Come on, stand up, stand up with me. I'm not finished, but stand up with me. Some of you just got to shake yourself, amen. You got to shake the past. You got to shake the, you got to shake the, you got to shake the, the, the images that the devil has placed in your mind, the thoughts that he has placed in your mind. And you got to make, you got to talk to yourself and say, I'm not going to think about this any longer. I'm not going to allow this to guide my life any longer. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not going to live in despair. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to have the joy of the Lord. I'm going to have the peace of God. And I'm not depending on nobody to give it to me or to bring it to me. I'm going to get it from Jesus. I'm going to depend on Jesus making me happy. Jesus giving me peace. Jesus giving me joy. That's where, my, that's where it's going to come from.
you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're not better off dead. You're not better off dead. God hadn't forgot you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a faithful God. Peter and Matthew uh, 14 and 30. When, when Peter asked Jesus to, to come in Matthew 14, 30, to step out on the water. We know the story of Peter walking on the water by faith. Some of you here, you got to walk by faith and not by sight. You can't, you can't, you cannot, you cannot walk according to what you see with your natural eyes. You cannot walk according to your own ability. I don't know if you ever really trust God. I don't know if you've ever really just say, Lord, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to expect your success. Hallelujah. I don't know if you ever said, Lord, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to expect your success. Sister Ford, can you look something up for me? Just drop that in my spirit. It's in the book of Genesis. It's, um, um, I believe Eleazar was the servant of Abraham, and he had went to find um, um, uh, Isaac's wife. And when he got there, he um, there's a verse that speaks about his prayer to God that he would have success in um, in finding the right one, that that day that God would bless him with success and there's a Hebrew word, I can't that will come to me, I can't think of it now but it's, but God he had prayed for success that day but listen, this is a, in Matthew 14 uh, 14, 30 in this uh, passage where, 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 where Peter was walking on water uh, the last part, he said Lord he began to sing. He said, Lord, save me. He said, Lord, save me. I, I probably wear that out. I wear that out for myself. I literally wear it out. Because almost every week I need the Lord to save me from something. Amen. I need the Lord to save me from something. Whether it's big or whether it's small. I'm always saying, Lord, save me. And I may be saying, Lord, bring me out of this. Lord, help me out of this. You've got to stop trying to work this thing out yourself. And grab on to something and, and, and cling on to something. And you've got to say, Lord, help me. It's the quickest way out to say, Lord, help me. Because even if there's something around that you can grab a hold to, it may not be stable enough to pull you up. It may not be what God wants you to grab a hold to to pull up. So you grab a hold of something and it appears to be uh, stable and secure. And before you know it, you, you, you still, you're back in the same situation you were in at first. He, he, he didn't call on him. He didn't call on him. Peter began to sing because he took his eyes off of the Lord. And when we begin to sing, it's simply because we take our eyes off the Lord. And life in your day is cons consists of you taking your eyes off of God. Because we're in this humanity, we're going to feel confident. And we're going to feel encouraged that we can do this thing on our own. That we don't need God. I don't need you, God. I got everything working right now. Plenty of groceries, money in the bank. Amen. Got a good job. And all of a sudden, something unexpected come your way. And, and it's just because God loves you. 
And he's allowing you to sink so that you can say, Lord, help me. And he can pull you up and out and now you're back on track again. Praise God for allowing us to sink through the day and through the week. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's Peter. Peter begins to sink. And then in 31, and it says, hey, immediately. immediately. Look what happens when you call on the Lord from your heart. Now, Peter didn't have anything to grab a hold to. The closest thing to Peter was Jesus. What's the closest thing to you? Huh? Well, if he's the closest to you, call on him. Before you call somebody else, before you think about something else, whatever is close to you, Peter's in the ocean, and, and he can't, he, 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 either nothing surrounds him but water. There was nothing that he could grab a hold to. And Jesus apparently wasn't close enough to him for him to grab his foot or his hand. Jesus was, but Jesus was close enough to get to him in the emergency. Hallelujah. Without well, a preach right there. You ever reached out when people drown and the first they gonna grab hold of whatever is close to them and they gonna try to, and that's why sometimes more than one person drown together because that person that's drowning has so much fight in them that they're grabbing out of fear whatever's close to them because they're drowning, they're going under. And what happens to us when we're going under we grab whatever's close. We do it out of fear. And and what 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 they what they how they train uh, lifeguards. When I was a lifeguard, they would train us. Say when you see somebody drowning, the first thing you do you throw, you tow, and then you go. They say throw them something and try to pull them in. Row out to them if you got a boat to row out to them. They don't go. Let them wait until. And when you go, they say wait until they have stopped fighting the water. Wait until they have stopped splashing and they're and they're going. They're about to go on the then go, because it's at that moment when they have no more fight in them. With us. Sometimes God got to wait until there's no more fight before he can come and get us. Because if he came and got you right then, if he sent some help right then, you, are, you still got enough energy to take something under. So God wants to, wants to the fight that's in us is the, is the lack of faith. It's believing we can do this on our own. And God allows us to just get woe down. Anybody feel woe down? Amen. I tell you what, you ever felt so woe down and you get to the place where you can't do it on your own no more? You say, Lord, help me. You don't have to wait until you get woe down to say, Lord, help me. He is close enough to reach down and grab you immediately like he did Peter. And that's what he did. He said, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand. That means... Jesus was close enough to just reach his hand out and caught him and said to him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? See, you doubt when you take your eyes off of Jesus. But that's okay, church. Say, that's okay. Come on, say, say that's okay. Because right now you can put your eyes back on him. Amen. You can put your eyes back on him. So one thing I want you to know tonight. You don't need another sermon. You don't need another Bible verse. You need to have faith in God. You have faith in God tonight. You need to believe God tonight. And what you've already heard, you need to have faith in what you've already heard. You need to go home. You need to sing songs. Amen. You need to praise Him. And thank Him. You'll be amazed how much, uh, come, how much you got stored on the inside of you. But what you got stored on the inside of you 
you don't even know it until you begin to praise God and thank God. When you praise and thank God, there's something on the inside of you that opens up. And you begin to sing songs that you thought you had forgotten. Amen. You ever just been praising him and all of a sudden you sing a song that you heard when you was a little child? Amen. Or you heard a, you sing a song that you've heard in church and you didn't even know you knew the words to it. But the, 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 the Lord hides his word in your heart. It's hidden in there. And it is unlocked from your heart when you begin to thank him and you begin to praise him. Amen. And then out of your heart come scriptures and out of your heart come hymns. Amen. And out of your heart come songs. Amen. And those things, let me tell you, woo they are designed to, to create around you just a, a just a, 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 a spirit of weapons, amen. Just a, just a, They're designed to bring joy. And they're designed to, to, to protect you, amen. You can protect yourself with your own mouth. You can protect yourself with your own praise. But the devil keeps your mouth closed. He wants you to keep you bound when you're going through something. He wants to keep you looking at that situation and just talking about the mountain. But if you begin to sing praises, you'll see that mountain shrink and your God elevate. Amen. Amen. You'll see yourself begin to you, you'll see yourself begin to elevate and your problem will begin to decrease. Only from you just telling the Lord thank you. From a heart, from a heart that is thankful, amen. Praise God. That, that in your heart will open up and words will come out of it. I want you to be firm with Sister, Sister Ford. Read that for us. I, I want the verse where um, I believe it was the servant that prayed uh, for um, that, that prayed that he would have success in finding um, the wife of Isaac. Read, I'll know if that's one. so that he could find the right woman for his master's son. He could have just went out there and found somebody. But he wanted to find the right one for his master's son. So he prayed that God would give him success for his master Abraham. And God did just that. And God is the same today as he was then. If you ask him for success, then you don't have to wait till tomorrow. Lord, just said that in my spirit. Why wait till tomorrow? 
Ask him right now. Say, Lord, give me success. You, ought to, you got to mean it. You can't just say it because I'm telling you to say it. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let us stand. Amen. Lord, give us success. Give me success, Lord. Hallelujah. Whatever you got to do, you, you know what's facing you. You know what's ahead of you. You just got to say, Lord, give me success. Give me success, Lord. I got to have this conversation, Lord, give me success. I got to talk with this person, Lord, give me success. Give me success in this new job, success in my income. Lord, give me success, Lord. Give me success. And when you pray that for yourself, also pray it for somebody else. Pray it for somebody that you know that's in need, somebody that you know hurt, and ask God to give them success. Real quick, before we go, and we're about to go, and I'm going to sit down again. Turn to the person that's closest to you and pray for success for them. And we're going to receive our offering. We're going to go home. Grab that person's hand, whoever it may be. Pray for success. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Bless them with success. Mm. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Give them success, Lord. Ask for it and expect it. Ask for it and expect it. Give me success in the name of Jesus. Give your servant success, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Nothing's impossible for you, God. Nothing's too big for you, Lord. Those who are watching us as we stream, Lord, give them success. Success of God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah.
we just thank you and we praise you tonight. Thank you for the report from New Mexico how you're healing Brian's body, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for how you healed Sister Fanny, dear God, in this ministry. Mother Funderburg, dear God, you strengthen her body, Lord. You continue to heal her body. How you healed Mother Davis, oh God, hallelujah. God, how you restore sight to Mother Hawkins, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, how you healed Ashley of that liver issue, God, Lord, you are so faithful, God. God, we thank you how you delivered Brother Gardner, dear God, from, from infection in his body. How you're healing Sabrina even right now, Lord. Strengthen her, Lord, in the name of Jesus, dear God. Give her strength in her body, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord. You've healed so many in this ministry, God. We thank you, Lord, for our little sister, me, Lord, how you are healing her body in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, we are not afraid to believe you for big things. Not only will we ask you, God, but, Lord, we will believe you for God. Many ask you without believing God, but we only ask those things that we believe in this church, oh God. And God, we bind ourselves together, Lord. We bind all of our faith together, dear God, that we will be used for this generation and in our time, dear God. God, as you were used, as you performed miracles and healings and you did the impossible, Dear God, for Moses and Abraham and the rest of them, God, we expect not to tell those stories all the days of our lives, God. But God, we expect healings and the, the book of Acts to manifest today as it did then, dear God. God, we expect the power, your power, dear God, to rest upon us, Lord, like it rested upon those men, dear God, and those women, God. God, we believe. God, that your power is even greater today than ever before, Lord. And dear God, we believe that you want to release that power, Lord. Release that anointing, dear God. We believe that you want to heal in this day and in this time, God. That you want to show yourself strong, God. We believe, dear God, that there's miracles and signs and wonders, dear God, that have not yet God. God, we are the people that desire, Lord, the authority and the power to walk in it, Lord, to live in it every single day, dear God. Here we are, Lord. Let us impact this generation, Lord. Let us impact it with signs and wonders and miracles and healings and deliverance. In the name of Jesus, let us turn this world upside down. This city, this block, God, this this region, God. Let every everything we do, let it be done, dear God. Let everyone know, Lord, that God is alive and that you are alive and that you are still God and you're still performing miracles. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for healing the sick. We thank you, Lord, for good reports, oh God. But Lord, we want people healed. We want them completely delivered. We want them completely set free, God. We don't want it half done. We don't want it done with medication alone, God. We want to be able to lay our hands and speak in the name of Jesus, God, and command sickness and disease to go. We know that we have the power and the authority in Jesus' name. We know that Jesus lives on the inside of us, dear God. We know that he is not dead, but he is alive in us, dear God. And Father, we thank you, dear God, that we are dead. Dear God, very resurrected, that we have new life, dear God. That we are bold, dear God. That we are bold believers, dear God. That we have great expectations, God. That we want to see the dead rise, God. Not because we just want to see it, but because we know we have authority over death. In the name of Jesus, blind eyes, we want to see them open, God. 
because we have authority over blind eyes. Open Barbara Carter eyes, oh God. Open that man eyes, God, that I saw in Port Allen, dear God, in the name of Jesus. He has so much faith, dear God. He believed you, Lord. Open his eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. God, I believe you can do it. I believe you will do it, Lord. It ain't going to not be done because of my faith, because I believe that you can do anything but fail, Lord. And I give you praise and I give you honor. Bless the souls that are here tonight, Lord. Bless those that couldn't make it, Lord. God bless them with success today and tomorrow. God, let doors be closed that need to be closed and open that need to be open. God, I pray for success for people on every, in every pew and every seat, Lord. For people that hear my voice, God, let them walk in success, God. They walked in heavy, they walked in burden, they walked in broken. Some walked in happy, some walked in full of joy. Give them more joy. Give them more peace, God. God, let them put their hands in your hand, dear God. Immediately, Lord, deliver. Immediately, Lord, set free. Immediately, Lord, renew in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we give you honor and praise. Receive the offerings that we'll receive tonight, Lord. Bless them to multiply. Take us from this place, but never your presence. We go in peace, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise.